So in this slide, uh, I would like to share you how to develop the velocity triangle for Pelton wheel. So this is the velocity triangle for Pelton wheel. So uh, first, what you need to understand is the mechanism of the water hit the bucket. Because here, we could see that the, the velocity triangle, it's here uh, can be determined as the inlet uh, point, and this is at the outlet point. So, but actually in, in reality, in reality, the, the point here, so actually at, occur at the same point and it's occur at one, one short period of time, at one split second. Okay, the idea is when the water hit the bucket, so the momentum from the water jet here will push the bucket like there. And at the same time, the water will flowing will go down. So means that actually what happened here is actually the the impulse mean the the momentum uh, from the water jet and the bucket. That's why Pelton wheel is categorized as impulse turbine. So the impulse turbine means so it hit and run. So it's uh, totally different with Francis turbine. So let's say we have a, a Francis turbine here. So the water will flow and then rotate the blade and comes out. So here, water is fully submerged the blade. So mean all the casing here will fill with water. Means all the blade is, is touched with water. However, for Pelton wheel, only certain bucket here is being hit by a water jet and the heat the heat uh, uh, area is actually limited. Not all the time and not all the bucket. So means the water only hit certain bucket at a certain time. So that's why we call it as impulse, uh, impulse turbine. Okay, so and then, okay, what you need to understand more is the idea the water jet hit the bucket. So. I repeat again, so the water hit the bucket here. So at the same time, in short period of time, so the bucket will move uh, to, the, to the right side and the water here will flow down. So I hope you could imagine the, uh, the mechanism, the, how the water jet hit the bucket and how the water will flow down like this one. Okay, but to, to draw velocity triangle clearly, normally we will draw the inlet is here and the outlet is at this point. Because in mechanism, we still believe that the water will hit here and then it will flow down and comes out. But actually, so uh, in actual, maybe we could assume that it's actually hit the same uh, point. Why uh, uh, it is uh, important for you to understand that? Because the value of u here is actually equal to the u at this point. So means that because the wheel velocity, because we only have one velocity and the water hit at one single point, so means that the velocity of u at inlet is equal to the velocity u at outlet. So later on, we will discuss about that. Okay, first, I hope you could understand how to draw the velocity triangle. Okay, let's say we go for the inlet. So this is inlet. So and then because our nozzle is like this, okay, so we assume that we have an actual velocity like this one. So it is same with a centrifugal pump and also the Francis turbine we must draw the actual velocity first. So this is the actual velocity at inlet. And then as I said, after the water hit the blade, so the water will flow out like this one. Like this one. 
Okay. Please do not imagine water will flow like this one. Why? Because if the blade here is static, then the water will flow uh, like in this direction. Okay, because the wheel here is free to move, so means when the water hit the bucket, so the wheel will move and the bucket will like that, like this. So and then at this moment, the water will flow in this direction. Okay, so I hope you could understand the mechanism of uh, uh, water hits the blade. Okay, so we start again. So this is the actual inlet velocity and this is the actual outlet velocity. Okay, so and then we, we need to draw the component velocity. In inlet, okay, so the, the component is U1 in this direction and also the VR1 in this direction. Okay, so it is very simple to draw this one. You, you must imagine. Normally in Francis Turbine, we have V1 here. So, and then we have VR1 here and we have a U1 here. Okay, this is what we always draw for centrifugal pump and Francis Turbine. Okay, please imagine that this VR is actually uh, parallel with U1. So means that this VR is not vertical anymore. So the, the VR1 is now parallel to V1 because the blade here, the blade shape is actually parallel uh, to the uh, actual velocity. So means that the U here also lay at this direction. So that's why in the inlet here, we draw the U1 here and the VR1 here. Okay. So what, why we have a, these two components? Because these two components actually, so the idea is the velocity of this one, mean the real velocity of V1, a part of its energy will be used to rotate the wheel. That's why we have component of U1. And another... Uh, another part of real velocity will flow relative to the direction, relative to the shape of bucket. So that, and then we have the, the second component here, which is the VR1. Okay, that is the velocity uh, triangle at inlet. Then uh, we will uh, discuss about the velocity triangle for, at outlet. So this is the actual velocity. V2. Okay, so and then because uh, at one uh, moment, okay, the shape of the bucket is like this one. So and then we could draw the uh, VR2 here because this velocity is relative to the shape of bucket. So and then we, we, we can draw the tangential velocity U2 as this one. So I think you already know. So the U1 here is actually the tangential velocity at this point. Okay. So we draw it uh, normally uh, horizontal like this one. Okay. So and then actually in a pattern wheel, we don't have the F, VF2 and VW2. But if you want to draw the VF2 and VW2, you could draw the VF2 like this one and the V will to add this one, okay. But in our calculation, okay, the, the value of V will, uh, v will to and V F2 is actually not exist. Why? Because in Pelton wheel, we don't have casing. So we don't know what is the cross-sectional area of that water. Okay, you just imagine that we have a wheel here so we have a bucket here. So and then the water hit bucket and the water and the water will flow down. And then we don't know how to calculate the cross-sectional area. Why? Because in Francis turbine, we calculate the value of V is Q over K pi dB. So what is pi dB here? It is actually an A area, cross-sectional area. So if the water flow down, flow out 
freely like this one. So means that we don't know what is the real cross-sectional area for water flowing out from the bucket. So means that we cannot calculate the value of Vf. At the same time, we cannot calculate the value of Vo2. Okay, so normally we are not using Vf2 and Vo2. Okay. So and then, uh, okay, uh, as a summary, so I hope uh, you could uh, draw the velocity triangle like this one. At inlet, so this is the actual velocity V1, and this is the actual velocity at outlet. So in inlet, we have component of U1, and we have component of VR1 like this, and this is the component of VR2, and this is the component of u2 okay so additional you could we could draw the vf2 like this one and we could draw the v world 2 at this uh, direction and then uh the deflection angle so the deflection angle means at what degree the water will be deflected so means that if we draw a horizontal line like this one so this is the deflection angle. So it is equal to this angle or this is equal to this angle. So, so normally it is 165 degree. So uh, normally in uh, exam, we will not change the angle because this is the, the optimum angle that uh, being used in reality for Pelton wheel. Okay, so this is the idea how to uh, draw the U1 VR1. So let's say this is the common for Francis turbine. And then uh, there are no flow velocity. So means that now we have the, the uh, velocity vector like this one. And then if the VR1 here is parallel with the uh, velocity of jet, so then we could draw the uh, velocity component like this one and then we just rearrange the the direction uh, from uh, inclined that uh, like this one into the horizontal direction like this one so this is the basic idea to to draw the uh, velocity triangle it is not a triangle actually so the velocity components in the inlet okay so at the inlet here so the velocity triangle at outlet is exists immediately after the water hit the bucket. Because of that, the point of change is occur almost at the same point. So this is the idea that you need to understand in Pelton wheel. So and then, so we could have uh, the calculation of this one. So according to the mathematics, to the uh, velocity vector, we could write VR1 here. It is equal to v1 minus u1 okay so because as i said the water is actually heat at the same point so means that there are no u1 and u2 so we could use only u only so it means there are no u1 and u2 for for pelton wheel okay so this is the assumption so u1 is equal to u2 is equal to u so and then so here the assumption is because the uh, the velocity of flow uh, it's not exist actually so means the the only remain uh, velocity is v world one so another assumption that we could get uh, we could uh, need to know in inlet is v world one is equal to uh, v one so the how to remember this one is Okay, normally in uh, Francis turbine, we have this one. So, and then we assume that the velocity of flow is become smaller and smaller and smaller here. So means that the V will one will become larger and larger and larger. And then at, when the v, VF1 here is equal to zero, the V will one here is equal to V1. So this is the, the way you could remember this uh, assumption. So at the outlet, okay, so at the outlet here, okay, we uh, assume that the water will flow into this uh, 
on the bucket like this one. And because the water flow on the bucket like this one, so we assume that there is an energy, energy loss on the bucket surface. So we assume that the velocity at inlet here is not the same with the velocity at outlet. You know, when water flow on certain surface, so the resistance on the surface will slowing down, uh, will uh, make the velocity become uh, slower and slower. So we could uh, derive an equation, a simple equation like this one, which is the VR2 means the velocity that comes out from the bucket here is equal to K times VR1, mean K is coefficient, mean it is equal to certain percentage of VR1. So, so and then we could say that the value of K here is the bucket friction coefficient. So, and then, okay. So, uh, because we want to uh, develop an equation. So, here, uh, in reality, normally we know uh, the, the velocity of world is actually not exist in a real one but uh, it is uh, to to develop Euler heat so we need to derive the value of VW2 so here so uh, I show you how to derive the VW2 okay so I hope you understand until this uh, section so and then we have the angle here deflection angle here theta so and then Okay, let's say this is theta. And then if we take this angle, so we could say that this angle is actually 180 minus theta. So, and then cos 180 minus theta means the, the idea of this one, this length divided by, by this length. So, means that U2 minus V2 here divided by VR2. So, and then uh, we could have this term. So, we have VW2 is equal U2 minus VR2 cos 180 minus theta. And then we replace the value of VR2 with what we define here. Okay. So, and then we will have VW2 is equal to U K VR1 cos 180 minus theta. Okay, in this calculation, please make sure that you are using cos 180 minus theta. Okay, now we are calculating the Euler head. So, because Pelton wheel is a turbine, so mean Euler head here means the, the theoretical head that uh, at the output here. So mean Euler head is actually the output of Pelton wheel. So in centrifugal pump, Euler head means the input value, the theoretical input value. Okay, so previously in uh, Francis turbine, we know that Euler head can be calculated like this one. So Euler head is 1 over G, V1, U1, V1 minus U2, V2. So, and then uh, why we use 1 minus 2? Because at point number 1 here, okay, so water has a lot of energy. So, and then when water travel on the bucket here, certain of the energy is transferred to the wheel. So, at the outlet here, water now less of energy. That's why we calculate 1 minus 2 because amount of energy at point number one is bigger compared to the amount of energy at point number two. Okay, so this is the Euler head. And then uh, because the value of U1 and U2 is actually constant, so we could rewrite the equation become U over G, V1 minus V2. And from the previous slide here, Okay, so we make assumption V1 is equal V1. And then at the outlet, we could calculate the V2 as this one. Means that we could use these two value into these terms. So we substitute the value here. So we substitute V1 with V1. 
and we substitute b world 2 with this term so and then we could get this one you could try this at home and then we could factorize the terms finally we could have this one okay in certain textbook there will remain the value of cos 180 minus theta in certain textbook they will give you the value of b2 here so that's why uh, it is important for you to know uh, how to draw velocity triangle and uh, know uh, the, the meaning from the uh, question, the explanation of the question. Okay, so I hope you could try this at home, especially in factorize this term into this term. Okay, so what you need to under, uh, what you need to remember as the Euler head for Pelton wheel is this one. So this is the most common Euler head equation for Pelton wheel. So I hope you could uh, remember this one. And the value of k here normally will be given in the question. So and then the power of Pelton wheel. So the basic equation for power is rho g q and h. Okay, so if you want to calculate the output power, so we are using we are using the output head. So we substitute the Euler head into H. So mean if we substitute Euler head, so we could get this equation. So and then if you uh, cancel the value of G, so we could simplify the power equation like this one. Okay, this is the velocity triangle uh, from uh, Porter textbooks. So it is okay for you to use the, it is okay for you to use the U1, V1, VF, and so on. 